Today I'm going to talk, start a short series, five-week series, on our core, core values, Unity Spiritual Center Denver core values, and I'm going to begin with love, as you might have guessed. <laughs> how do we live from love? How do we embrace that and how do we embody it in our daily lives? How do we embody it in our community and how do we embody it in the world? And I'm not claiming that I know. I just want to share some of my ideas that came to me this week about it. Um, and what I want to talk about first is just the whole idea of values. Uh, the core, we talk about values. What are our core values? And for me, when I think about values, I think about uh, the ways that we identify how we express and experience God how we express that divine energy that God is and, and how we do it through as we call it love and we call it integrity, we call it inspiration, we, and we call it oneness. Some of those are our core values and love. And, and there are many others, many other ways that we experience the divine through us and as us and many ways that we can express that. And when I think about our core values, are those, obviously, those things that we hold at the depth of our being that are important to us, the things that we value deeply, and those things that we say are important to us as we interact with each other in community, and we interact with each other in the world, and the way we treat ourselves. That's an important piece as well. How do we be love to ourselves? How do we live from love for ourselves and for the world and for each other, even in our own community? And I think those idea of values is very important. You, I mean, you may have discerned your own core values, and I think it's important for us to discern our own core values because I think in many ways our core values can help us, can help guide us in our lives in the decisions that we make, in the things that we say and what we do. If we are aware of what we value deeply, then we can measure what we do and what we say and how we be in the world by what we say we value. If We really value this value of love and being loving, and we can measure ourselves by that. And I think that's important for us to understand. What, what do I value? And I think it's also a great way for us to maybe have a different perspective or a different lens through which to view ourselves and to view the world and to view each other. And I want to talk a little bit about that today, what came to me about that. And this is all in concert with what we teach as compassionate communication. And it's not necessarily just... It's not my thinking, it's what we really aspire to, I think, here in our community. And sometimes what I, what I notice about me and what I notice happens in our humanity is that when someone says or does something that causes us to feel some level of pain, it stimulates some pain within us, and when I use the word pain intentionally because I think on some level, even if it shows up for us, even if we experience anger or sadness or fear or whatever, some level there is pain underneath that because what I'm wanting to express is that what happens for us, if we look at what we value, and when somebody says or does something that stimulates pain for us, what's really happening is that they are, we believe, they're doing something or saying something that goes against what we value. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we say that we value being love, loving in the world. And somebody says something or does something, and it stimulates pain for us, and we think, well, they're not being very loving. I really value love in my life, but that, what they did is not very loving. You know? You see what I'm saying? And we then 
create an enemy, in a way, an adversary of the other person. And what do we do when we have an adversary? We normally either fight against that adversary, or we run away from that adversary. Or in, we, we don't want to feel the pain, we don't want to deal with it. We don't know how to deal with it very often. We don't know how to deal with our own pain or, or, or rather the, other than you're bad, you're wrong. And as Butterworth says in what I was going to read to you today, that when we get into judgment, we're part of the problem because we're in fear. And so we're judging the other person as bad or wrong. And we are in that moment putting them outside that circle of love. And guess what? We're also putting ourselves outside that circle of love. You can't have it both ways. And so when we judge, guess who feels it first? The other person doesn't even know you're judging them. You're the one that's feeling it. You're the one that's experiencing it. You're the one that's putting yourself. We're the ones that are putting ourselves outside of the energy, the consciousness of love when we're judging each other. And the other thing that we do in New Thought, I think, so often is that we do this thing that we call, lovingly call a spiritual bypass. We feel the pain, but we don't want to feel the pain, so we're just going to pray it away or affirm it away. And what I want to say to us is that, that yes, we will get there. We will get to the place if we pray and if we meditate and if we affirm. We will get to the place of acceptance and love. But I think loving ourselves asks us to be with ourselves. There's a slide. Can you put that slide up? What we say, what we have, when we defined loving as one of our core values, but one of the process was to define what that means to us. We had a team of people that came together and defined what it means. And this is the definition that we came up with. We are divine expressions of God, living compassion, acceptance, understanding, and respect. We are divine expressions of God, living compassion, acceptance, understanding, and respect. So how do we be loving? How do we live from love, especially when we are faced with something that totally disrupts our peace and our joy and triggers something within us that says, my, what I value is not being, not being met here. Do we fight against that which is triggering us? Do we run away from that which is triggering us? Do we pray it away? Do we just say it's not happening? Do we deny it? No. That's not our spiritual practice. Our spiritual practice, if we're willing to go deep into it, is to be with it. To be with it. Be with ourselves in it. And understand for ourselves. To give ourselves respect. Yes, I am a spiritual being and I intend to be loving and peaceful and joyful, but right now I am angry, I'm upset, I'm feeling pain. And that's okay to honor that within us. It's part of our humanity. And to honor that 
to feel it, to go into it, not avoid it. To respect that and to give ourselves understanding for that. Understanding and to accept ourselves right where we are. As I said, yes, this too will pass. This feeling will pass, but right now, this is what I'm feeling. To accept that, embrace that, understand that, and to give yourself compassion for that. Because you do have things that you value. You value love and you value respect. And you value safety and security and you value lots of different things. You value equality and you value equanimity, oneness. And when you see things in the world that you believe are not embracing or not living or expressing those values that you hold so dear, it's painful, isn't it? Am I the only one that feels that? Do you really do you feel the pain sometimes? Do you allow yourself to feel the pain or do you try to avoid it? Do you try to resist it? Do you fight against it? Or is it that we say, well, you're wrong, you're bad, and so I I am right and you're wrong, and so I'm going to draw the line in the sand and I'm just going to be mad. (laughs) When we do that, When we do that, where is that circle of love that we talk about? We're not loving ourselves. We're not including ourselves in that circle. And that's where we, that is our spiritual practice, and I understand that it is not always easy. In fact, it is difficult sometimes. I find it difficult sometimes. There's a lot going on in our world today, and I think that we cannot, at the risk of alienating everybody in the room, we cannot ignore that. Because part of our teaching, our spiritual practice, why we come together and to learn and to grow and to practice is so that we can go out into the world and live our spiritual practice, isn't it? We don't just come here and live in a bubble. We don't just come here and just just associate and live with people who think the same way we do all the time and feel the same way we do and believe the same way we do. No, we live in a world where that doesn't always occur. And so we have to rely on our spiritual practice to help us, to ground us. We have to come back to love as often and as much as we possibly can so that we can be that radiation of love in the world. And hold that as our value a core value. And so I know there is a lot of energy. We're all inundated with it unless you live under a rock. Or don't watch any news. Or, and that's okay. I, that's okay. Um, there's a lot going on in the world today. And so what I want to say about that is there's a lot. I'm hearing a lot this word resist a lot. I'm hearing this word resist. I want to say don't resist. Because what we resist persists. That's what we teach. Don't resist. Because when you are resisting, you're fighting against something. What I want to say is be clear about what we value. Be clear about our spiritual values. And the core one we're talking about today is love. 
Be clear about love and stand firmly in love. Allow that love, that core value to inform what you do. Do you see the difference in when we resist and react from fear and when we respond from love? It doesn't mean we're not going to stand and speak out against things that we see as injustice. But we do it from a place of love, not from a place of fear. So it's important for us to get clear, I think, about what we value. What is important to us? And to stand in that. And also, it's important, as difficult as it may sometimes be, to be able to look at the other and recognize that they too are living in that place of living from what they value even though it may not appear to be in alignment with what you value. But can we show the love for ourselves to respect where we are, to have compassion and understanding and acceptance? Doesn't mean we have to agree. But to hold that perceived other in that same energy of love. How many heads are exploding right now? (laughs) To look upon the other. Draw that circle of love around the other and see if we can come into that place of acceptance. Again, it doesn't mean we have to agree. Understanding that, yes, they are holding values as well. We all really do value much the same thing. We just have a different way of expressing it sometimes. Can we find where we have that commonality and hold each other in that space? And to understand, have compassion for the other. That they too might be experiencing fear and pain and dismay and disheartened, loneliness, whatever it is. So ultimately what I want to say today is that It's important for us to know what we value, to stand in what we value, and to be clear about that core value and and to allow that, and I'm talking today about love, to allow love to inspire us to what we say and what we do. And to be very clear about what we're saying. I find it interesting to even get into conversations with people today because so much of what we talk about comes from fear. Can we shift the conversation even? Challenging, I know. But are we willing to shift the conversation, to shift the energy from fear to love? I think that is our spiritual practice. And I understand that many times, regardless of what, where you are in the political spectrum, it's challenging sometimes to come back to love and to draw that circle. But again, I want to say begin with you. Draw that circle around you, that circle of love, of honoring, respecting, and understanding, and acceptance, and compassion for yourself. Because as 
as we hear every time we go onto an airplane. You've got to put your mask on first before you try to assist someone else. Give yourself love and compassion first. And don't resist. Stand firm in your values. Speak from love. Act from love. Extend that circle of love to all people. All people. And know that we can be and we are the agents of love, the ambassadors of love in the world if we choose to be. And love is truly more powerful than any other energy. Love is more powerful than fear. We just have to believe it and stand in it and express it to the best of our ability.